Okay, uh, I will speak English because my Spanish is slightly worse than English, so, uh, okay. I represent the World Congress of Families in Russia and Soviet Union, and uh, also representing a World Congress of Families at the United Nations. And we have launched recently this new project, uh, FamilyPolicy.ru, which is an advocacy group, and we analyze all the laws in Russia and internationally at the UN level from the family perspective. If you're interested, here I have the, uh, uh, our recent report about the uh, bad things that are happening at the United Nations level, and it's about 100 pages uh, thorough report, and uh, uh, if, I, if you want I can uh, share more information with you about this. And in Russia I can tell you that um, recently there have been uh, very important developments. Uh, five cities, or even more now, have passed the legislation that are banning homosexual propaganda to minors. Such big cities as St. Petersburg, Erhangersk, and others uh, passed this, and uh, now are they legally uh, punishing those who do this, uh, you know, uh, propaganda. And they're debating at the federal level to pass the same legislation. And we're giving our support in terms of legal advice and uh, thorough analysis of uh, bad consequences of this homosexuality propaganda given all the examples, and just last week we participated in the uh, public chamber of Russian Federation, uh, you know, explaining the uh, bad consequences of the anti-family laws. Also, apart from this, we have launched recently a new uh, 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 grassroots activism uh, uh, organization, which is an, uh, the same as Asteoir.org, but it is uh, Be Heard in Russian, uh, beheard.ru. You, you can check the site. Also, we do online petitions and street rallies. We already did one in St. Petersburg, another one in Moscow. So we're going to rally near United Nations and UNICEF headquarters in Moscow, protesting about you know, like stop sexualizing children and other stuff. And um, uh, we were inspired by Hastoir, by the great job that uh, Ignacio Arzuaga and all others are doing here. And uh, thank you very much, the organizers of this uh, uh, beautiful congress, which I hope we're all enjoying. And also I just uh, uh, can share with you that last year we have uh, organized in Moscow uh, first World Demographic Summit, Family and the Future of Humankind, which took place on June 29th and 30th, and it attracted a lot of attention. For example, this is only 10% of the media coverage that we have got. Uh, it was 1,400 pages of uh, media coverage, uh, half of it in English, half of it in Russian. New York Times wrote three times about us and uh, it got a lot of publicity uh, with basically close to zero PR budget. So we just were sending over the year, we were creating all the good stories to attract attention. And World Congress of Families newsletter was also very instrumental in uh, popularizing this event, so everybody wanted to come. For example, uh, the, uh, the venue of this uh, place, of the summit, was the Russian State Social University, which is now one of the biggest in the world with uh, over 100,000 students. But before that, it used to be a headquarters of the Communist International, which was uh, having the purpose of destroying family worldwide. And now a very symbolic uh, change has happened that now all the pro leaders of the world pro-family movement has gathered in the same historic building. And that gathered a lot of attention and it's, it was a, a Lenin, uh, it was a institute of Leninism, Mar Marxism, Leninism in the 70s and the 80s, I still remember. So uh, it was a historic place. So we got Alan Keyes, former US president candidate, uh, Hungarian minister of family, EU parliament member Anna Zaborska, who had an official blessing of Russian patriarch of the uh, also representatives of Muslim community, of Jewish community, and uh, greetings from US Congress, Russian Parliament was a great event. And uh, uh, also, as you, may he as you may hear, next World Congress of Families will take place in 2013 in Sydney, Australia, but in 2014 in Kremlin in Russia. So for 5,000 people inside Kremlin walls in this huge uh, his uh, building, and uh, we invite you, if, you're, if you will be around at that time, uh, please come there. And uh, our demographic summit was uh, such a successful thing that uh, just last week a governor of Ulyanovsk, which is a one million uh, uh, inhabitant city on Volga River, which is a kind of Mississippi of Russia, <laughs> a big river, and uh, he, he wants to do the same type of demographic summit in Ulyanovsk on September 12 this year. 
and uh, he asked us to come up with a name and with the international speakers, so it's getting momentum. And demography is a hot issue in Russia, as you know, uh, population is shrinking and families uh, are in crisis, so uh, those are some of our recent developments. So here is several slides about our efforts at the, in Russia, at the United Nations, at the uh, European uh, Commission level. And as you know, family, family is uh, central to basically all major problems of modern humankind, whether it's economy or education or you know, drugs or, or, or anything. If we resolve family, then um, all areas of life will be better. Just to give you an example, uh, you know, in terms of economic dimension. This current uh, crisis started in the United States, as you all know, in the real estate sector. And one of the factors, I'm not saying like the main one, but one of the important factors was that a uh, very numerous generation of baby boomers retired. And there was no one replacing them, so demand for new houses shrank. And that's, you know, uh, started the crisis. In Japan, for the last 20 years, there is a depression because they have one of the lowest birth rates, only 1.2 per woman. And just to maintain the current level of, edu of uh, population, you need 2.1 uh, per, per woman overall, and it's twice less. So there is no demand for new products, for housing, for real estate, for consumer goods, and it's bad. I mean, it's bad, uh, and it's so, so obvious, but uh, population control movement still says that... Uh, we are overpopulated and people pollute. But it's not true because, for example, if we put all the world population now and put it on the territory of the United States, the density of population will be the same as it is in Holland today. And Holland is a pretty comfortable place. They even have canals and, you know, some <laughs> parks. So it's, it's completely lying, you know, manipulation. Our tomorrow is being shaped today in the family, and it's so obvious, but many people don't realize, and um, uh, we're in crisis. In Russia also, the situation is very bad. Uh, we're, we're losing population in big numbers, almost quarter a million now, officially. And uh, uh, we have a lot of divorces and, and this. Our leaders uh, that uh, you're familiar with, I hope, uh, and as well as religious leaders, they stress that uh, uh, it is important to resolve demographic situation. And Natalia Ikunina is uh, also taking uh, taking a part in this uh, uh, world uh, in this World Congress of Families. And Father Dmitry Smirnov as well. Uh, we were just speaking in the main plenary session. It caused a lot of interest. So, uh, government realizes that if there is no people, uh, territory of Russia is so huge, and if there is only ten people living in all Siberia. It's not feasible to, to maintain it, so all the figures also show uh, that uh, how bad it is. And um, this is about World Congress of Family. This is some of the pictures about uh, demographic summit that took place last year, as I said. And here we have all the sponsors at the bottom, which were uh, the leading corporations of Russia. Even the biggest corporations realize how bad demographic situation is and how it affects negatively, like Ural Sieb, Ross Inter, Inter Ross, and uh, metallurgic company, those are the top, top companies, and they all support it. And for example, Ural C Bank, uh, it has a pro-family policy, so uh, if you have more children, they will d discount the uh, interest rates of your loans. And uh, Russian State Social University, they also have their policies that uh, if you have more children, they will give you discounts for housing and uh, all other events. Okay, and uh, another interesting development is that uh, in November last year we have uh, arranged the uh, St. Petersburg Resolution about anti-family trends at the United Nations, and it was signed by 126 NGOs all over Russia. So here you can see some of the cities in Russia and Ukraine also, to the west of Russia, uh, basically from all over the country, they supported, uh, supported this claim. And then later on, another 200 NGOs of Ukraine joined. So around 400 NGOs have supported us. And this, it costed zero for us because we just uh, uh, prepared the document and we didn't want to dominate over those organizations. We just wanted to share with them uh, this document and they all agreed. And uh, it was like a common baby of everyone. So no one was uh, offended or there was no competition, but just helping them. And uh, it was uh, uh, through Skype and web webinar, the uh, uh, conference, and we agreed. But it sounds very 
impressive when 400 NGOs from all over Russia support it. It's really important and we want to do a parallel events at the United Nations and uh, uh, things like this. Here you can see that the population of Russia is concentrated along the southern border. In the north there is very few people because it's so cold there. And this is a Trans-Siberian Railroad uh, along the southern border, so that's where people concentrate. Just, you know, a remark about the map. Okay, so here is our uh, leaders, and uh, now I want to show you another presentation uh, about, the, uh, uh, about uh, the importance of uh, uh, mass media and, uh, okay, here. The topic of three. this, the top, yeah, two minutes? Okay. Three, three. Yes, yes, very quickly. Three, three, three. Three minutes, very good. Okay, uh, just uh, with whom we're dealing. This presentation I, I prepared for the uh, uh, religious conference, uh, you know, last, uh, uh, last December in Vienna, and we were meeting with the leaders of uh, Catholic and Jewish and uh, Christian communities. And we see that uh, this is just an illustration from religious perspective now. Uh, this, uh, the Christian views in the social life. So we start with Jesus Christ, 33 AD, and then the Christianity spread and became very popular in the social area in the Middle Ages. And then it started to decrease, obviously, in Renaissance of paganism, Enlightenment area, and now we're somewhere where the red line is, and it's up to us whether we will turn around this trend of, uh, you know, taking out Christianity completely of uh, public life or not. And behind uh, uh, those uh, people who wanted to uh, destroy family is the Frankfurt School of Thought, which is a cultural Marxism that merged with Freudism and came up with this sexual revolution concept and drug revolution of the 60s and all this radical feminist movements and radical uh, environmental movements. And basically those people won the world revolution. And being from Russia, this is very close to my heart because we had this uh, early phase of revolution uh, with Karl Marx and Darwin and Lenin and the red flags of the revolution. But now the same mission is accomplished by the LGBT activists because they are just moving the boundaries of a society. They want to destroy the traditional culture uh, and they use, uh, they use uh, religion is one of their biggest obstacles and uh, it is uh, uh, important to understand, uh, to understand all those factors. And, uh, uh, you know, by the way, that uh, uh, so there is a very interesting book about socialism as a phenomenon of the world history, written by Shafarevich, the 80-year-old um, now uh, scholar. And this idea was given to him by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, uh, you know, and uh, this, uh, I met him personally, he's a very bright person. So this uh, book uh, tells that socialism has been always in the world history, in the ancient Babylon, ancient... Uh, you know, societies of uh, Indian, the Azteca, or Egypt. Uh, there was a public works and big irrigation canals and huge pyramids were constructed just like in the Soviet Union. And then this uh, socialism concept was promoted by Platon, the ancient thinker who said there should be no wives, all the wives should be common to everyone and, the, you know, there, there should be a complete democracy in this sense. And then heresies in the Middle Ages, they were took, just took the shape of the religious dress and they were for the complete equality against the rich. And uh, in the uh, uh, new times, it was the many utopias about the dreams about uh, equality that without rich people, etc. And just Karl, Karl Marx didn't invent this concept. He just wrapped it into the uh, materialistic economic terms. And basically, it's like a religion. And uh, it's proved to be wrong completely, but it's still very popular for some reason. And communism has failed dramatically. Uh, more than 100 million people were killed by communist regimes over the 20th century in Russia, in China, Cambodia. And if you go now to Cuba or North Korea, I lived two years in Cuba myself. It's a beautiful country, but because of socialism, they have shortages of everything, nothing to eat. Uh, but still Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton and Sapatero and people like this are attracted to this. And the history doesn't give any lessons. And it is amazing that Russia paid such a high price for this completely devastating experience. It's a lie. It en ends up with a gulag and prison. And still the world is tempted with this. So uh, it's just uh, very important to understand uh, what's, what, what's happening. Here is just to wrap up the map of...
the blue colors where uh, homosexual marriages are legalized and the reddish yellow color where they're still illegal, mostly Muslim countries and African countries. And here is the, uh, uh, the same for Europe and fertility rates fall very shortly so population shrinks and the Bible clearly says in many places that homosexuality is bad. So that's why there is a big trend to ban Bible as a hate, hate book or hate speech and it clashes with religious freedom of course. So, uh, you know, also uh, the last thing to say is that, uh, you know, whatever we do, but we need to uh, understand who are the main educators of the next generation. This is mass media. This is a paramount importance to uh, have pro-family values in the mass media. According to statistics, a person from the time it is born until he reaches or she the age of 17, come, you know, consumes more than 60,000 hours of media influence, meaning television, internet, etc. It is six times more than the time they spend at school, and it is uh, 30 times more, you see this chart, 30 times more than uh, the teenager spends with their parents, not just sitting to, next to each other watching TV, but talking to each other. I've heard that average American father spends just eight minutes per day with a child. And it's 60 times more than they get spent in church. So mass media of entertainment are the main educators of children. And it's completely very important to influence this. And here is the picture of Ted Byer, uh, who is the leading uh, movie guide, the family entertainment to um, cinema and entertainment in Hollywood, who is redeeming Hollywood and trying to protect Christian values, to promote family values in Hollywood for the last 30 years. And we just launched the same project in Russia. Uh, last week he was in Moscow, we had a meeting with top mass media people, television people, and we're launching the same project in Russia. They evaluate every movie, uh, 300 movies uh, per year that come out from Hollywood from family perspective. And uh, say this is anti-family, this is pro-family, so children can be protected by their families. So those are some of the developments, and uh, uh, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.